like to call this Harnsburg County Council meeting of August the 19th, 2024, in order. I'm going to ask uh, Councilman Ravenel to give us a moment of thanks before we proceed any further. Let us bow here in a word of prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for allowing us to come out to this meeting to share some information and to gather some information for the people that we serve. Father, we want to thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us down throughout the years. Father God, we pray for mankind everywhere. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mr. Ravenel. And over there for public comments of other matters. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Geneva Sharon, and I come to stand before you as a poll worker slash clerk. I'm here to ask and to uh, support the the um, raise that Ms. Aurora Small put in the budget for us. I don't know whether the budget has been approved, but however, she put a raise in there for us. And I feel as though that we should get this raise because we work sometimes 13 to 14 hours a day in bed. And we are just not equally paid or compensated to our neighboring um, voters registration, poll managers and clerk. Uh, I did check with Richland County and Richland County poll managers get 185 and then clerks get $60 more. Well, we only get $60 for our training, $65 for our training, $65 the day that we, $75 the day that we work. And then the clerk will get uh, $75 more. So I'm just asking that you all consider. Okay, Ms. Judy, well, we, we thank you so much. Um, do we, do we? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Member Council. Actually, we met with the director on the small last week and we were discussing that and uh, communication with the delegation to see uh, what assistance we can receive from the state. Yes, uh, we were in discussion on that uh, last week. Uh, I have a proposal. Uh, proposal that I wanted to uh, make that try to get the county um, EMS team to work with me on. Um, that is that businesses, especially restaurants, um, if the county EMS team can teach the hybrid maneuver and some of the life saving techniques, and perhaps restaurants could have a diabetic meter and a blood pressure machine on hand just in case there's an emergency and tool help can arrive. I think that'd be a very good idea, especially for restaurants, even other businesses, but restaurants. Who would I need to see about um, checking into that? I've already called um, the hospital, I've already called the um, Orangeburg County EMS about it. And they told me to reach out to you all, which I was planning on doing anyway, so. Uh, we'll, we'll turn that over to staff, Mr. Marin and those ladies, to kind of look in there and talk with you about it. Before we get, you know, so, I'm not saying it's a good idea. It's a good idea, but it I'm is. just saying we, it's a process. So we need to let the staff kind of look into it, along with the EMS and others, to see if it's feasible and how can we work. Okay. I'd like to say something. I have always got to say something to Mr. Green. Um, recently, someone said that um, you have been doing some very good work and walking around in Orangeburg, and somebody said that they coined the phrase. Yes, he is the street. Mayor. <laughs> so I'm going to take that and live with it. And um, I didn't even think of what you were thinking now to have that done, but that sounds like a very good idea. And we probably need to look into that a little further. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. That's why I told you. Yes, please. You know what I thought you were talking about? Because once a week I cook and I fix like 15 plates and take them downtown to feed the homeless once a week. So I thought that would be a problem. No. Chairman, you're right. Yeah. Right, Mr. Member. My name is Payne T. Gaffney, Sr. I'm here uh, yesterday. I, I saw uh, that we are trying to promote again the pen attack, which is very, very crucial for Orangeburg County. But I also noticed that about 40% of the new project has something to do with recreation. In the time that Orangeburg County which is the second or third largest county in the state have a county recreation department. We we can do all this, spend all this money on projects to fix this recreation or fix this part for recreation stuff, but yet we have nothing here.
for our children to do. We're talking about wow, gangs and stuff and drugs and alcohol is all over there with the young folk. We have nothing for them to do. I have come here on several occasions, mentioned this project, talked to the county minister, Mr. Young. But yet I said now with our new proposal for the penny tax project, we're talking about reparation there, fixing that for reparation there, but yet we're not trying to do anything for all 17 of our municipality in the county of Orangeburg. We need it for our kids. We gave Dr. Kenneth Mosley and myself gave to Mr. Young a proposal, an outline proposal of how it can be done. All we need is the county council to put it in action. Because we need it. We are one of three counties in the state of South Carolina that don't have a county recreation department. We're not doing our children justice. I came here the last time and asked you, what price do you put on our children? They need this to get them out the streets, give them something to do that's positive and, and that they can be productive and successful in. Not only recreation, they all kinds of things. Now that we got these vacant schools that have still have some good facilities and have satellites all over the county to use. Again, we gave that proposal to Mr. Young. We have heard nothing about it. We need it in our great county for our children. Thank you. My name is Gloria Yorick and Dr. Hutto. And I'm bringing um, something to to the board meeting about um, the tax problem. We had one lady here one night that said she moved in from out of town. But um, everybody pay those taxes except the one that renting and don't have coffee. I think they need to put something in place with people who rent and have car and have children, don't have a car and have children in school. But we paying for school tax and county tax. Thank you so much. First item on the agenda is a presentation by Vincent Sanders, Prevention Specialist from Tri-County Commission on Alcohol and Drug Abuse uh, with the FIRE Squad Youth Carolina, Youth Coalition, I'm sorry. My name is Vincent Sanders, Prevention Specialist from Tri-County Commission on Alcohol and Drug Abuse. I'm here to introduce uh, our president of our Drug Prevention Youth Coalition, uh, Ms. Kennedy Banks. Uh, the fire squad is the uh, youth subsection of our prevention services department at tri County Commission on Alcohol and Drug Abuse, uh, where Mr. Mike Dennis is the executive director and Mr. Van Gaffney is the board chair. So uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the fire squad and our president, Ms. Kennedy Banks. Before you start, what's that acronym, F-I-R-E? Uh, fire squad stands for Fearless Individuals Reaching Excellence, Drug Prevention Youth College. Fearless Individuals Reaching Excellence. My name is Kenny Banks. I'm from Edisto High School. I'm a senior and I'm the president of the Fire Squad. We are a youth group that advocates for drug prevention amongst adolescents and children in the Orangeburg, Bamberg, and Calhoun County. Our Orangeburg group consists of youth advocates from Edisto High School, Orangeburg Wilkerson High School, and the Ed Orangeburg High School for Health Professions. We are proposing that an ordinance be established in our county that limits where vape shops can set up. We believe the amount of vape shops we have, as well as the locations of these shops, provide easy access to adolescents and children getting their hands on vapes as well as other harmful drug products that these stores sell. We believe that location restrictions from school zones, daycare centers, recreation centers, and churches will contribute to limiting the amount of students that are easily exposed to opportunities for substance use. We also believe that there should be restrictions about how close vape shops can be to each other. Orangeburg currently has 291 tobacco retail shops. Mm -hmm. Of those 291 retail shops, 9.97%, which is 29 of those retailers, are close to schools. That's higher than the state average, which is 6.94%. 
of the 291 tobacco retailers, 70.79% of them are located near other tobacco retailers, categorized as less than 500 feet. This data includes the 14 vape, vape shops in Orangeburg that sells flavored e-cigarettes, which are very popular amongst children and adolescents. This speaks to the ease of access to tobacco and nicotine products amongst the youth. Also assume that if the Orangeburg County School District had allowed their students to participate, this percentage would be much greater due to the increased numbers of students that would have taken the survey. As of right now, we have 85.9% of the black community that participated and then 10.3% of the Caucasian community that participated. I would like to now say thank you for giving us this opportunity and thank you for letting us show you how close and why we would like to present our presentation today. I would like to mention just on, the, on, this, on another subject that uh, many of our big shops or many of the public items that our local big shops carry um, are not even FDA approved. Um, if, if you do not know, of course, the Food and Drug Administration uh, regulates all of our uh, tobacco nicotine products, and many of the big shop, uh, many of the vapes that are popular amongst our youth are, you know, came, are not even regulated really. So you would be uh, shocked to look on the back of uh, boxes to see um, the amount of nicotine that are in these vapes that our youth are getting uh, access to without even having any prior um, habit of drug use. Um, they try to market it as this is for people who uh, are trying to get off cigarettes, but they know, we know the lights and the candy flavors and the fruity flavors are specifically targeted towards our youth. And I think it is incumbent upon us that as we try to uh, revitalize our Orangeburg community, that we also address these vape shop issues uh, because they are a huge eyesore um, to our community. And if we are trying to uh, show that our parents that we are trying to provide a better community, we need to be invested in the public health of our kids so that we don't have another uh, epidemic of kids growing up addicted to nicotine. Thank you so much. As I said before, my name is Kennedy Banks. I'm a senior from Edisto High School. My name is Zion Goldsmith, and I'm from Orangeburg Wilkinson High School. I'm a junior. My name is Madison Ryan, and I am a junior at Orangeburg Wilkinson High School. My name is Kimari Dash, and I am a freshman at High School for Health Professionals. My name, is, my name is Mariah Guignard, and I'm a freshman at High School for Health Professionals. My name is Makari Bronson. I am a senior at the High School for Health Professionals. My name is Destiny Scott, and I am a senior at the High School for Health Professionals. My name is Chase Carter, and I'm a senior that attends the High School for Health Professionals. Um, it's, it's good to finally put a voice, a face with the voice, because we had, had the telephone conversations, and I'm glad that you were able to make it here today to do the presentation. But to all of you, thank you for being role models in your community. Um, I come from a law enforcement background. Um, I supervise the Alcohol Enforcement Advice Services Unit at SLED. And when we talk about the nicotine, alcohol, drug use, all of those things, it's an epidemic. This vaping has become an epidemic amongst our youth. And many people always say troubled youth or at-risk youth. All youth are at risk. That's what they don't understand. My child and everyone else's child is at risk. So I thank you all so much for taking it upon yourself to be leaders and to be able to spread the word about how dangerous these drugs are and also in the hands of the wrong people. So thank you all. Keep doing great things. And I take my hats off to you. Thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, I just like to say, please don't stop here. Continue uh, to talk about abusive use of substance, and um, your voice will be heard. It is heard. Thank you for coming. I'm getting an education. You see me? That makes two of us. <laughs> because I mean, I'm from the country. I'm calling great stuff and all that. I'm getting a good education today. Um, I, I just. Thank you so very much again, and thank you all the young people for what you're trying to do. Thank you so very much. Um, is there any more comments from anyone before I ask for a motion for adjournment? Thank you.
thank all of you for attending our meeting tonight. Have a blessed night. Tim.